Steve Baker is with us. He's the investigative journalist for The Blaze. He's a Blaze media correspondent. He is in today with his attorney because on Friday he was arrested by the FBI. If you happen to miss that podcast, it's kind of a don't miss. It's Friday's podcast. James Lee Bright is his attorney, and he is with us uh, now. Welcome back. Hey, it's good to be back, Glenn. So I heard you say the very first thing um, out asked how you how do you feel, yeah. and you said humiliated. Right. Why? I, I thought I was mentally and emotionally prepared for this because I've followed too many of these cases to not have been. I've seen too many of these guys, even misdemeanor defendants, even misdemeanor independent journalists marched before a magistrate in leg chains and the orange jumpsuit. So I thought I was ready for it until they put the leg chains on. And it, I, I mean, I've, I've never even been fingerprinted for anything in my life. And to actually in the moment that it was happening, um, it, it, it was overwhelming. And then on top of being chained at your, at your waist and your legs, then they put you in a cage with a meth dealer. And yeah. for, and, and, <laughs> and of course Lee can speak to this better than I can, but the process of putting a nonviolent misdemeanor defendant who has been utterly and totally cooperative since the very first phone call from the FBI over two and a half years ago. It, it could have been just an order to appear. I could have walked in with Lee, both of us with our jackets and ties on. We could have sat in the gallery. They call us up. We stand before, just as they did for a felony defendant that day. But I'm guarded by U.S. Marshals with leg chains on. So how many misdemeanors, Lee, have you, have you done where they're in leg chains? How many times do you see that? In a case like this, almost never. I've got clients right now that are charged with felony drug cases that we are negotiating with the DOJ for voluntary turn-ins. There's an active warrant on one that I was speaking with this morning. And the DOJ is working with us to do a voluntary turn into a magistrate. We'll do a same day hearing. She'll process through pretrial services and be out. No leg chains, nothing. This was determined by the DOJ in Washington. They had us turn Steve into the FBI at their headquarters, 7 a.m. Walked him through, processed him, put him in leg chains and a waist chain, handcuffs to his waist, and then took him directly to the marshals down at the Cabell building here in Dallas. Yeah, no, I don't remember anybody in leg chains and uh, irons for BLM setting cities on fire. No, in fact, most of those were just catch and release if they bothered to catch at all. In fact, most of them had their cases dismissed, and then many of them have been awarded cash payouts from the government because they were, you know, unfairly arrested or uh prosecuted because obviously we had to understand what their frustrations and what, you know, made them burn a building down. So I was really encouraged by, um, by the op-ed that came out from Jonathan Turley yeah. this weekend. Um, he makes the point uh, that you, you know, might be a um, activist journalism or a journalist activist you know, whatever this new thing right. is that they're doing, right. because you have an opinion. And Stu and I were talking about it earlier this morning. Yes, you have an opinion. I have an opinion, but that doesn't mean that you um, are finding the story you want to find. You could still have an opinion on things, mm -hmm. but as long as you're honest enough to say, I'm going in and I don't know what's going to happen. I have an idea what could happen. But I'm going to tell the truth no matter which side it falls on. Is that who you are? Well, see, that, that's the thing that obviously not only the charging documents themselves, because the charging documents are what they call the statement of facts. They are, in fact, specifically put together for the purpose of constructing a narrative okay. for prosecution out of context comments. More importantly, and this is the this is the key, Glenn. I, I, look, I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll let I'll let let me let a NBC the court reporter the guy who does 
every one of the cases, J6 cases for NBC. He's there every day. His name's Ryan Riley. And he tweeted out yesterday. He said, if it wasn't for Steve's language on January 6th, before he entered the Capitol, and then after that evening, this case almost certainly wouldn't have been brought. Okay, so, well, that's, uh, wow, that's interesting here in America. Um, l- let me go through the actual charges, and let's take them one by one. Absolutely. Can we do that? So of course. here are the charges. You want me to read them? Yes, please. Okay, so these are the charges listed in the criminal complaint. That's not the formal filing of an uh, uh, of the charge. That would be either an information and misdemeanors or an indictment on felonies. But this is the com- criminal complaint that issued the arrest warrant with the supporting affidavit and statement of facts contained. And Steve's right. It is written with the intent to create a language narrative. There's no question. So of the four charges that Steve's been charged with, 18 U.S.C. 752A1, that's knowingly entering or remaining in any restricted building or grounds without lawful authority. That's the one that carries up to a one-year in jail penalty, minimum of six months. 18 U.S.C. 1752A2, disorderly and disruptive conduct in a restricted building or ground. 40 U.S.C. 5104E2D, disorderly conduct in a Capitol building. And then 40 U.S.C. 5104E2G, parading, demonstrating, or picketing in a Capitol building. Okay, so the, I don't know, I'm sure you uh, know this now, I don't know when you found out, but the Speaker of the House released 5,000 hours Mm -hmm. of videotape, much of it centering around you, um, and showing that you weren't parading or picketing or being disorderly at all. Ever. Ever. Not at all. So how do they make that charge? That's going to be fascinating to see. I well, mean, <laughs> you, you know, th- this is this is, and and again, I I I don't want to get into being the legal expert or even trying. I mean, I did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night, right. but the <laughs> the point being is is that they always because I followed so many of these trials, they always overcharge. But mm. that's not just J six. That's just that's, that's DOJ, always, always. and that's to scare you into a quick plea deal. Correct. They get their, uh, you know, their notch in their belt and their points towards whatever their next uh, you know Correct. career advancement whole goals are and that's essentially what's happening here technically yes i went in the building okay so if that is a crime then it is a crime but but, but if charges that's a cri- hang on if that's a crime then the crime has to be punished equally so the new york times the washington post every single journalist would have to be charged with that Crime, right? Well, I mean, I think we've, as I think Steve and I were talking earlier, and I think we've estimated that roughly 60 journalists went into the rotunda, went into the Capitol building on that day. Six to seven have been charged now out of 60, rough. All of those have been right of center media. All of them. So you, um, uh, you are being made, let's see if I can find it, from N- NBC. You're made into a total clown by NBC. The same guy whose right. tweet I just read. By Correct. The way. Um, and uh, he he says that uh, you are just a you're in a cover band. You weren't a journalist at the time. I don't know who defines journalists now. He, I, refu- I don't know he refused is. to call me a journalist. Instead, he said, "Now I'm a writer for the Blaze website." That was his only way of getting around having to acquiesce to Correct. what I was doing that day. I, so, got, I, uh, I apologize. No. I got to know Ryan a little bit when we were in trial back in the fall of 22 for three months for the Oath Keepers trial. Yeah. I always found him to be a really reasonable fellow. I like some of his work, but I, I agree. The, the article that he wrote regarding Steve. It's a hatchet job. It was, and it, it was petty. It was completely unnecessary. I thought it was really poor reporting, and it was done not unlike the complaint, not unlike what we see when we're talking language. It was done to establish a narrative solely to disparage Steve. So um, how do you, first of all, how do you combat the journalist thing? With him going in, that's a six-month sentence, could be. Um, and he has said, well, yes, technically I did. I did violate that. So how do you defend that? 
Well, number one, I'm, I'm not the only attorney on this case. Okay. We've got about five of us that are volunteering on this. And we're, we're volunteering because we got to know Steve during trials in D.C. Great reporting. Always loved spending time with him. He was one of the few conservatives in the press pool there. Uh, one of the other attorneys. That no, we're he's a musician uh, NBC News, <laughs> a musician and libertarian writer who was a frequent presence at the federal courthouse in Washington, D.C. during the Oath Keepers' seditious conspiracy trial. What were you doing just hanging out there all the time? Well, the worst thing that I was doing is I was uh, about half of my reporting was on the press pool. Mm. They didn't like that. Because I always sat in the back of the room so I could watch them and see what was on what they were doing, see what was on their screen, see which games they were playing during the important testimonies. Mm -hmm. Uh, to see who was pre-writing their stories and then just hanging out in the hallway talking, because that's what they do, and they're really good at it. They, they can pre-write two or three stories in a day, and then as soon as the rulings or the mo you know motions are filed, they can then fill in the blanks and boom, submit, 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 you know, and, and they get out. And then more importantly, um, I was able to show on certain very significant testimonies how the comparison of how the various journalists withheld because because see we all know it is it is it's not that they lie it's the lie of omission mm -hmm. it's when you're only covering the uh government's um uh, case in chief and their witnesses and then all of a sudden they get out and go for coffee break during the cross-examination how can you tell the truth about what happened in that trial 